hello my friends welcome to Atlanta you can tell I'm not in Las Vegas I'm in the backyard at the house uh, my housemates are gone the dogs are gone for the day and it's just me in the big house it's nice um, although I do miss my friends uh, the the awkward part about traveling on my days off is frequently my days off do not match those of my friends so I spend a lot of time by myself even when I go home uh, to Atlanta or Boston um, so why am I filming today because um, I missed you guys <laughs> also you know I, I've been watching some videos on these few days off I don't know why again I don't know why I subscribe to Netflix or Amazon Prime because I just watch YouTube uh, but I was watching some videos um, from this guy Timber and I really wish I could remember his last name he does um, a series called uh, Buddhist Boot Camp he is clearly a Buddhist and a minimalist uh, at that, which I guess is not uncommon if you're a Buddhist. Um, and his videos were really inspiring. He uh, lives in a, an RV, and I think I identify with him immediately because, you know, I lived in a, a minivan for a short time uh, before uh, getting this job, and I touched on that in the past. And I might make a video about that later but um, he lives in an RV a very very nice one uh, but it allows him to have a very low cost of living uh, he has five gray t-shirts and one pair of jeans he lives in an RV he doesn't really have many things uh, he works enough to support his you know his low cost of living and that's it and he was talking about how rich and how full his life was because he didn't have to spend so much time working to financially support, you know, immobile objects like houses, <laughs> you know, he didn't have to spend a lot of money and time and effort and spirit on these objects around him, allowing him to focus on his own spiritual life, to focus on being creative to focus on his relationships with friends, family, and himself. And I was just blown away. I was blown away by his videos. Um, because it really stru it struck a chord with me. I, I, I think as I get older, um, my self-care becomes more and more important because, uh, again, as I get older, um, it's harder to maintain everything. There's so many other things pulling me uh, my future isn't pulling me so much as it was when I was in my 20s. The future wasn't calling so loudly. <laughs> the past, it calls me a little bit more loudly now. And I'm kind of trying to slow the future down, you know, and enjoy my present. Um, boy, that sounds, I think that sounds more wise than I really am. So don't give me credit for any of that. Um, so, you know, when I was getting this job, when I was going for my CJO, I watched a lot of videos about, uh, from other flight attendants, and almost universally they said, you can get as much money as you want. Don't worry so much about uh, that first few years. It will be tough financially, but you can make it work. Just work those hours, get those trips, work your days off. You're gonna make it. Just You can make whatever you want. The sky's the limit. The sky isn't the limit. We're flight attendants. You know, and uh, and I, I took that advice and I ran and I I was kind of like a greyhound after a rabbit. You know, I wanted those hours. I wanted those trips. And when I didn't get them frequently uh, in my airline, open pot, the open time pot is seniority based still. So I can bid for a, a trip on my days off. But I may not get it because someone who's more senior to me will have picked it up instead. Uh, so it's still seniority based. It is what it is. Other airlines aren't like that. It's first come first serve. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I was so eager and anxious to get an extra trip because I need that money. Why do I need that money? Now you you've maybe you've watched a lot of people have. Uh, my video about how much money I made in December. It wasn't a lot. 
but my needs are not astronomical. Thankfully, my uh, one of my best friends who owns this house here in Atlanta, and I wish I could show it to you. I think he, he wouldn't want that. Um, it's a gorgeous big giant house in the Buckhead area of Atlanta. It's gorgeous. The yard behind me is just expansive. It's gorgeous. Um, my studio apartment in Vegas cost me five twenty-five a month. My utilities are almost nothing. My cell phone is probably my biggest expense outside of that. I do have about $1,200 in debt. I'm gonna try and work on that. Um, but I don't have a lot of great big needs. I, I jokingly say I could live like a cockroach. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't cost much to be me. So why am I so anxious to pick up a trip to earn more money? Partly, it's because I like nice things. I want to go out on a, uh, a layover in Chicago, for example, and go to the Fashion Outlet Mall and buy uh, this really cool coat I saw for $80. It was originally like $500. I really wanted that coat, but I put it back because I can't afford it. In the end, I can't afford it and I don't need it. I have so many clothes. Oh my God. Uh, so this these videos I watched by um, Timber, I keep wanting to say hunter, timber, uh, really inspired me. And I think not, they haven't made me want to make a resolution because I'm really not good at resolutions, but more of a commitment uh, to myself. Um, and, uh, you know, when I started filming this video, I usually have someone I want to talk to when I film something like um, a new person to the industry, someone who's looking for this job, uh, an older person like I had done in one of my other videos. Uh, but today, I don't know who I'm talking to. Actually, I think I know who I'm not talking to. I'm not talking to that person who has a mortgage <laughs> or children or school loans, those kinds of things. I'm probably not talking to you and I apologize if you've watched this whole video. <laughs> uh, because you really, you, as a new flight attendant, you will need to hustle. You'll need to hustle and you'll, you'll probably want a, a side hustle. And there's probably videos on how to get a side hustle. I'm not that guy. Um, but I, I think I'm talking probably more to myself. Not a surprise. I talk to myself a lot. Um, I think I'm talking to myself and, and uh, you folks right now are my witness, I think, really, to the commitment I'm making to myself out loud for the first time. I should have written this down. I have a lot of time off. Um, in Las Vegas, there's an enormous amount of homelessness. It's heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking. If I think about it too much, I will cry. Um, when I went to see my studio apartment, there was a woman sitting on the curb in front of a laundromat across the street from a subway, and she was picking at stuff on her, off of herself. I, I could, wasn't looking too closely, but she was dramatically homeless. I mean, in, in, a, in a cinematic sense, she was very dramatically, clearly homeless and picking stuff off of her. And I questioned whether or not I wanted to live in that neighborhood, of course. Um, but it's all over. Vegas is just, wherever you look, if you look, you'll see it. And um, it really is heartbreaking. So there's got to be people out there who are trying to help the homeless in Las Vegas. So um, one of my things I'd like to do is, is try and help make things easier. I don't know if I can fix things, but I'm sure I've got two hands uh, and a heart. So I think I could probably help. Uh, Habitat, for, oh, blah, blah. <laughs> Habitat for Humanity is a business, a, a, a sort of a business uh, where they take donated furniture and, and um, construction materials and they resell them to provide money to actually build houses for people who need them. Um, I volunteered a couple days with them and uh, they're just wonderful. And there's a recovery community. Wherever there's a lot of drugs and alcohol, there's going to be a lot of people trying to recover from said drugs and alcohol. And um, you know, I've been sober for 15 years, over 15 years. Uh, there's 
<laughs> there's got to be a big recovery community in Las Vegas. And the fact that I've been there since April and I haven't been to a, a single meeting of any of them uh, is embarrassing. Uh, if, if, if you're sober and watching, you've already judged me for that. Um, and that's okay. Um, so there's, there's so much to do. Oh, and I'm an artist, you know, I'm a potter. Like think of Ghost, the movie, without the dead people. <laughs> you know, I'm a potter and there is a pottery studio in Las Vegas, which is relatively expensive to join. So I will definitely have to budget for that. But uh, this whole long video is really, I think, talking to myself and I do apologize. <laughs> Maybe you'll be inspired or, I don't know, entertained by my, by my thoughts here. Um, but my commitment that I'm making to myself and I think my community, hmm is to spend some of my free time as a flood attendant caring for others in ways that doesn't include pouring a Diet Coke or um, you know seat duplications or emergency exit row uh, briefings. <laughs> um, and so um, I, I th there you go. I, this video is already long enough. It's, it's definitely a ramble. This is not going under a playlist of how to be a flight attendant. Uh, but I would like to hear some comments or read some comments about maybe if you are a flight attendant, what you're doing with your free time, or are you chasing after those trips? You know, do you have a reason that you're chasing after a trip? Um, questions, comments are always welcome. Um, I love them. And um, thank you for watching. Again, I say it often enough, but you're really saints for for watching these videos. Um, I love making them and um, seeing the reactions that I get from you folks. I, I do appreciate it. So drop a comment below, like the video if you want to, no pressure, uh, and certainly subscribe because this video, while this video may not have been so rich in content on how to be a good or a better or a flight attendant or get the job, um, there is, I do promise, good solid content. So uh, certainly subscribe. And um, there you go. Thanks again for spending time with me and uh, fly safe. Bye.